Hi everybody, so today I wanted to go over um, my new lens that I just purchased, the Tokina 16-28mm f2.8 lens. Uh, do a quick review of the lens and also some of my reasons why I decided to go with this lens as opposed to the Nikon 14-24. Uh, okay. um, a couple things about this lens. Um, it was uh, released in December 2010. It uh, weighs 946 grams, which is about 2.1 pounds. It has an angle of view from 107 degrees to 76 degrees on the uh, long end. Uh, it goes from f2.8 to f22. It has a uh, minimal foc focus distance of 11 inches. Um, it is not weather sealed and it does not have an aperture ring. And also the uh, the manual to autofocus on the uh, the ring is a clutch system, not like uh, the auto manual focus on 14 to 24. Okay. Um, first off, let me go over a couple of reasons why I decided to go with this lens. Um, originally, I'd been saving for the Nikon 14 to 24 f2.8 lens, um, but as I was saving for this lens, um, you know. I decided against getting this lens and start looking for alternatives um, because I don't shoot wide a whole lot. I do like to shoot wide angle, but I don't shoot wide angle a whole lot. I'm much more of a standard to telephoto um, focal length person. So uh, I decided to start looking for other alternatives and I started researching. I know that Nikon makes a 16 to 35, I believe it's an F4, um, but because of that, I um, I hear it's a great lens, but I wanted to shoot a 2.8. So, because I don't shoot landscapes hardly ever, I'm not really a landscape shooter. I like to shoot people, kind of editorial work, just things that are around me. And um, landscape really isn't uh, my thing. So, um, I didn't really need an f/4. I'm more of a low light shooter when it comes to that. Um, a couple things about the lens, also comparing it to other lenses. If any of you have the Nikon 24-70 f2.8, it's very similar in size and weight to that lens. The Tokina is pretty much the same size, and it's also, actually it's a little bit heavier by a tenth of a pound than the 24-70 2.8 Nikon. Um, now comparing it to the 14-24 the Nikon, a couple things I wrote down here is, which is surprising because um, the angle of view on the website um, has, from the Tokina, it goes from 170 degrees on the on the 16 millimeter side to 76 degrees angle of view on the 28 millimeter side. The Nikon, which has two millimeters, it's two millimeters wider at 14, has uh, 114 degrees angle of view to 84 degrees on the 24 uh, millimeter side, which is which means that the Tokina actually is wider than a Nikon by uh, seven degrees, which I I didn't I didn't know I don't understand how that works because the Nikon is supposed to be wider by two millimeters, but according to the website, um, the Tokina goes from has an angle of view 107, and Nikon's at 114, so it's a little bit narrower by seven degrees. Um, so I I discovered that which I wasn't I didn't I didn't expect to see. Also, uh, some similarities of the lens. The lens is, I mean, they both have nine rounded aperture blades. Uh, they both go from 2.8 to f22. The minimal focus distance is the same at 11 inches. Um, the Nikon, however, is weather sealed, where the Tokina is not weather sealed. For myself, it's not that much of a big deal because if it's raining outside, I don't take my gear out. I'm not a professional, so. Uh, I just I don't risk my gear in those situations. If I was getting paid and to do work like that, then then I would do stuff like I would get a weather sealed body. But the Tokina body, it it almost feels like it's weather sealed because it's so heavy. It's built like a tank. It just feels really dense in in your hands. And also, the Nikon uh, 14 to 24 has a nano crystal coating which prevents lens flare. Now I rented the. Uh, the 14 to 24 a while back, and I had it for about a week, and it's a great lens. Um, performed awesome. Um, I actually rented it to do some real estate shots for a friend of mine, and uh, it's, it's a great lens. Um, but the Tokina, since I don't shoot landscapes, I don't, I don't shoot wide a whole lot, but I do like to shoot wide. 
was good enough for me. All the reviews that I read about this lens is, you know, is great. The image quality is great. Um, it performs really well. Um, what I have noticed, however, is it does have a tendency to flare when the sun, when you're shooting directly into the sun, or when it's coming in at an angle, you know, 90 degrees or so, it'll flare, which isn't a big deal to me. And also, I think lens flare is actually kind of cool at sometimes if it's if it's the right kind of flare. So this lens does tend to flare, this is what I've discovered. And I'll go over all the reviews, and or my quick review, and some of the, I'll put up some image samples of what I think of the lens as well. Um, and another big thing about the, my decision with this is the price. So when I was saving for the 14 to 24, the Tokina right now, uh, in January 2013, you can get this lens for $850 with a $100 mail-in rebate, so essentially $750. The Nikon right now is going for $1,997. So there's a difference of $1,250, which, you know, is a big deal. That's, that's you know, double the price, or actually more than double the price. And I was so tempted when I was buying this lens to get the Nikon 135 F2 DC lens because that lens is $1,200. So you can get the Tokina. 16 to 28 and the Nikon 135 F2 DC lens for the same price as the 1424. And for me, that's much more of a uh, a better bargain for me because I like shooting portraits a lot more and I'm, I like sh using that longer focal length. So I was so t I was this close to buying both lenses, but I decided against it and just kind of hold back and I'll maybe get the DC some other time if I ever get it. Because um, that's specifically a luxury lens, right? Um, anyway, uh, so that's that was a big uh, uh, factor as well. So as far as the image quality of this lens, I think it's great. Everything was sharp. Um, it does vignette a bit at 2.8, but if you stop down f4, f5, 6, that pretty much goes away. I have noticed it's a little bit softer in the corners. Um, you know, sharp in the center. Uh, a little bit softer around the corners, but I could barely tell. You know, the Nikon one is much more sharper from the center all the way to the edges, right? Um, and also, as far as distortion, it's very minimal. I'll, I'm going to put up examples. I shot a brick wall at its closest focusing distance, and you can see um, minimal barrel distortion. I shot it at the uh, 16 millimeters and as well as the 28 millimeter focal length. Okay, here's a setup shot. I put the Tokina 16 to 28 on my Nikon D600 on a tripod and it's about a foot away from the brick wall. Here's the first shot at 16 millimeters at f2.8. I also increase the blacks uh, by about a stop in this image, or actually all the brick wall images because I wanted you to see where the vignetting is happening. So it's increased about a stop, maybe a stop and a half, I'm not exactly sure. Um, just so you, I'm over exaggerating the vignetting that happens in the image. So as you can see here, it's really sharp in the center and slightly softer on the corners. And you can see where there is a slight distortion at the widest um, millimeter, at 16 millimeters. Now here is the shot at f4 at 16 millimeters as you can see the vignetting is not as much and again I've increased the the blacks in these images so you can see it more and uh, the image is sharper more from center to edge. Here it is at 5.6 as you can see there's almost no vignetting even after I've increased the blacks and it's sharp pretty much from center to edge. Now here it is at f8 at 16 millimeters it looks great from center to edge. It's pretty much sharp all the way across the frame, and there's no vignetting. Now here is the shot at its longest focal length at 28 millimeters at f2.8. And again, I increase the blacks here about a stop, stop and a half, so you can see where it vignettes. As you can see, the distortion is much less at uh, 28 millimeters as it is at 16. Even though at 16 it really wasn't that bad, especially for an ultra wide angle lens. I'll just quickly go through the, um, the f-stops from here from f2.8 to f4 to 5.6 to f8 so you can see the differences and the changes in the frame. So since I don't shoot landscapes a whole lot, um, I'll put up some example shots that I've taken with this lens. I took this out last night 
uh, in Los Angeles at the Santa Monica Pier. Just took some candid shots, took uh, me and the kids. We went out and uh, we went down to the pier, took some candid low light shots. You can see how it performs. Um, you know, I'm really happy with this lens. Um, here are some of the shots I took. Also, one of the negative things that I did notice about this lens is it does have a tendency to flare. So if you're shooting directly into the sun or if it's coming in at an angle, it, uh, it causes flare. Um, a lot more than when I use the Nikon 14-24. to the, That lens was well behaved and it was able to control flare a lot better than this lens. I don't mind uh, a little bit of lens flare and I think actually um, if, if, it, if it's done right, I think lens flare looks really cool. Um, but one thing about this lens, yeah, it does, uh, it is susceptible to flare. I mean, essentially, if you want the best of the best Nikon ultra-wide lenses, you'd want the 14-24. to You're going to pay 2000 bucks for that lens, but it is the best lens around. This lens, what I found, is, it is it's just a hair uh, lower in optical quality than the 14-24, but it's it's, it's uh, half the price, or actually less than half the price of the lens. I'm totally happy with this lens. It's, it's made for people um, that are more budget-minded, right? And for me, I'm also budget-minded just like everyone else, but I will pay more for a lens if I want that extra quality. I'll just wait and save longer, and I'll buy the nicer lens. I, I, I always buy glass. I always recommend buying the best glass you can, the fastest glass you can, uh, over getting a camera body. I also got this lens, I forgot to mention, I also got this lens because I recently moved up to a full frame camera. Um, I have the 11 to 16 Tokina lens for my crop sensor camera, and I think that's a great lens um, for the crop sensor. Um, when I went up to full frame, that lens, the 11 to 16, actually works on a full frame, but it only really works at 16. Uh, when you'll get slight vignetting, but if you go from 11 to 15, you're going to get really, really strong vignetting and it doesn't really work. So I needed to get a new wide angle lens. Um, so that's another reason why I was looking for a wide angle lens. So this lens, it's, it's for that person, I think, like myself, who shoots wide angle lens, who shoots wide angle, uh, but doesn't need the most sharpest perfect wide angle lens. And for me, this lens is perfectly sharp, at least to my eye. Um, so I purchased this lens, and I was able to save twelve hundred bucks in the process of save of, of buying this lens, which I'll put down. If, I'm sure I'll buy something else later on. Use that money for something else. So it's a great lens, and I'm, I'm really happy with it. If any of you people are out there looking for a ultra wide angle lens and looking for an alternative than the Nikon fourteen to twenty four. Um, you guys, I recommend highly looking into this lens and giving it a shot because I think it's a great lens. Thanks.